Hi everybody, I am Sh Shannon Crow with Three Crazy Crows and Shelby will be here shortly. She's uh, my daughter and partner in crime. Today we're going to be showing you how to refurbish an old picture frame. You could also do a mirror into a chalkboard. Here's Shelby. Hi guys. Thanks for joining us today on Home Talk. Um, we hope that this is uh, fun for you to learn how to do. So this is our frame. But first off, what we got to do is show you what, how we're going to change out what was in your frame to a chalkboard. This was just a painting. We ripped it out, um, and now it just left us with a nice frame. So we have gone and got a big piece of, it's actually just underlayment. It's very thin. Um, really, any type of wood you could do this. We use this for a lot, though, for backings. So what we like to do is give ourselves little hole, pilot holes for the nails just to make it easy um, when the time comes to attach it. So it doesn't matter what side you do, really they're both the same. You're just going to go pretty close to the edge, depending on your frame, how much wood you got, and give yourself a little bit of, a couple holes. You can do them however you want. You don't really need a whole bunch. Tell Susie us where, says uh, hi from Germany. Oh, Germany. Hi. Yeah, everyone, tell us where you're watching from. We're in Potomac, Illinois. And it is a dreary day. Make sure you give yourself something underneath that you can drill into. You don't want to drill into a good awesome. table or uh, anything worth anything. Laura says good day from Australia. Yeah, good day. We just need a tiny little bit so that we get a nice little hole. These are the nails that we will use. You can use any little tacky nails, but they're just, just these little, we use these to tack stuff on all the time. Lisa says hi from Bloomington. Oh, Bloomington, Illinois? Mm -hmm. Hello. Big Brian's over there working today in Bloomington. Linda says, good morning from your neighbors in Rossville. Oh, hey, Rossville. Hey. Mm -hmm. Hope you're coming after the shop hop. So, so, how many holes do you think we have here? Oh, probably 20. And probably too many. We kind of do overkill sometimes. And we might not put nails in every nail. Yeah. <laughs> but that gives you a good idea of, of what we're doing. So, anyway, there you go. Now we um, are going to paint this. And we are using Valspar Chalky Finish paint in boot black. You could use their chalkboard paint as well for this, for, this, for the black. This, um, the chalky finish from Valspar does take a lot less coats than um, like their regular chalkboard paint. This is a higher end paint and it is a little bit more expensive, but um, when you're going for quicker and you don't want to do three or four coats of paint, you just want to do two, this is ideal. And um, a lot of times when you use a chalkboard paint and your intentions are to write on it with chalk you have issues with it scratching off this um, chalkboard paint here is it holds up to being written on much better than um, the regular chalkboard paint we have a couple people tuning in that missed the beginning could you uh, explain kind of what you're doing and what your finished projects gonna be yeah, uh, what so, we're doing here. Um, we started with a picture frame that had this just really hideous um, picture in it. And we had two of them, actually. And we just ripped it out. If this had been an actual picture, we would have just knocked out the back, 
pulled out the picture, um, and done pretty much the same thing. But this was such a nice frame for this. It was really perfect. So we ripped this out and left us with a nice base. Um, then we are preparing a piece of underlayment um, that we had cut to size. Brian measured it all out for us and cut it for us because he won't let us use the power tools. And uh, did this and did the underlayment and now Shelby is painting it. And then um, after she gets the chalkboard part painted, we will paint the uh, picture frame. Brenda wants to know if you have to use primer or not with this chalk paint. You do not. Yeah. Um, chalk paints in general, you don't normally have to use a primer. You can just go right over whatever your um, painting with the, the chalk paint, you might want to, if it's a shiny finish, you might want to go ahead and sand it lightly just to get the shine off. Um, but with chalk paint, it was really designed to not need a primer and really be a one step paint um, at, with wax. If you were seal. doing like a really important piece of furniture, if you were painting your, your dining room table or something, you probably would want to use a primer on it. But for this, um, and we're going to distress it too, so we definitely don't want the white primer showing underneath. And then after that first coat dries on the back of that, um, we will do a second coat, but it won't need three. People want to know where you can buy this paint. This paint we get at Lowe's. All and right. it is with um, it's with all their other like, chalk paints. So we're using um, again the Valspar chalky finish paint, and this is a color um, that it doesn't normally come, and they're that's not one of their choices. Um, so we took a, a a piece from I think it was a Sherwin Williams color. This is vintage teal and Valspar is what this color. Oh, is it called. is Valspar yeah. color. Um, you Just can. So you just kind of hit and miss if your Lowe's will do it or not. Um, we are lucky enough that ours will. You can just go and pick a color out that you like that isn't one of their, I think they have 20, 20 or 22 stock colors that you can get this paint mixed in. Um, and if you get someone who's helpful enough and knowledgeable enough, they can literally make this paint in any color. Which so we this, have them do a lot. Yeah, um, most of the paints we use are colors that we have just gotten off the wall that we liked and have them mix it up for us. So this is vintage teal in Valspar that we had mixed. And if you follow paint too closely, um, Sherwin Williams just came out with their color of the year, which is a color very close to this, I think. I think this this uh, this color and very close to it, it's gonna be super popular the coming months. Don't worry too much about getting it on the inside because your chalkboard is going to cover that. And we are going to distress these also. And again, these, this will take two coats of the paint, um, just like the back does. People are tuning in from Canada, Chicago. Love yeah. Chicago. Yes. Um, people are asking if you scruff the finish on the frame or just go ahead and start painting it. Um, I, we cleaned it off with crud cutter, um, but we did not, we did not sand it. These frames are pretty um, rough, I guess. They're not super shiny, yeah, but this chalk a... paint is pretty good at sticking to about anything. Eric wants to know where he can buy an apron like that. <laughs> Aren't these nice? Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, covered in layers and layers of paint. Um, we got these at a, I think it was like an antique sale. It was an antique sale. And we just thought they were cute, and as you can see, we wear them a lot. Mine's new. Connie says hi from Florida. Hi, Florida. Gosh, I wish that we were there right now on the beach. I just want to be sure and you get inside these edges here because the chalkboard's going to lay up next to it, but it isn't going to cover like the whole lip. So, and like mom said, if you get it on this 
belt right here. It doesn't matter. It's going to be covered up anyways. Everybody seems to have a picture frame or two laying around that is outdated or you don't know what to do with it. And you can, you can make chalkboard into it. It could be hanging in your kitchen telling you what you're doing for the day. There's just so many uses for it. Okay, so that's the coat of the paint. Could you describe what paint you're using again and how you got the color? This is Valspar Chalky Finish Paint. You can get it at Lowe's. Um, the color that we chose is a Valspar color, but it is not one of the stock colors that you can get this paint made in. Um, this paint comes in, it has like 20 or 22 stock colors you can get. Um, but if you're lucky enough that your Lowe's will mix um, colors for you that aren't supposed to be made into this paint, then you can take them literally any paint swatch and have them mix this. This color is called Vintage Teal from uh, Valspar. It is in the Valspar line. And, and we love that name because uh, Shelby's baby is named Teal. So mm -hmm. we love anything teal. Yeah, we actually uh, call this, when people get something painted this color, we've done a lot of things in this color, um, we've renamed it Teal Baby. So. But the black we are using is the black in the Valspar Chalky Finish line. It's called Kids Boots. And it is a really boot black. I'm sorry, boot black. Yeah, it's a really dark, true black. That it just covers so nicely. Alrighty, I'm gonna go set this over there. Okay, so then what we've done is, if you remember, I said we had two of these frames, so we went ahead and got one that's painted and it's dried, and. We will kind of show you from the dried paint finish um, what we do from there. Um, again, don't worry too much about, like when we go to hammer in these nails, damaging, you know, scratching the paint um, or anything. Because, I mean, we could lay like a towel over it and be real super careful, but we're going to distress this. And if you have any marks left on your chalkboard, you can, you know, touch it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach our nails. And the easiest way to do that is with needle nose and a hammer. Do you want me to hold them while you hammer it? Sure. Okay, so we're just going to put the nail down in the hole. She'll get it started. So, and our nails are actually black, so they're going to work out pretty good. People want to know about how much a can of that paint costs. $27, I believe. Yeah, it's is close to 30 So, it's not um, cheap, but it's worth it. It's worth it See, that is um, scratched up the paint a little bit, but it's going to be fine. We're going to go over this whole thing with the sanding block. Tracy wants to know if you could use a nail gun. You could. And if we were back in the shop and, you know, you with the nail comp or the air compressor and all that, but up here, we're in the store part, so. Um, and there's, it's only a few nails. Yeah, so. so. Anyway. Okay, we'll do a couple more and then we'll save that because I know that's got to be super loud for you guys. So, um, anyway, we'll just do one over here. Make sure it's tacked in. Move your finger. Oh, sorry. And again, you could use a different nail. We like to love these little tacky nails. One that they're black and we'll blend in a little bit better. And anyway, so now what we'll do is we're going to rough, rough it up a little. This is just, um, I think, probably a medium poor sanding block. We get, um, you can get these at Lowe's, any candy store, Menards. Carver Yeah, that's a good place as well if you need a bunch too. 
Paula missed the beginning. She asked if you made the chalkboard piece or not, if you, if you, or if you can buy it separately. Well, what it does, it's underlayment, and it's back in the wood department, and um, they will cut wood for you there at Lowe's to size what you want. We just bring the whole sheet home and cut it here. Um, because we use it, we'll use one sheet for a backing on a china cabinet, and this was actually scraps that we had left over from the china cabinet. So uh, we cut it to size for this, and it just works perfectly. But if you, you know, don't have the equipment at home to cut something to size what you need, again, like at Lowe's, and I think even Menards will cut cut it to what you need. And there's really no rhyme or reason about um, distressing. You just kind of want to hit the parts that maybe naturally would distress, which is going to be your raised parts and the edges. That would normally be what would get dinged up with age. I have a couple questions about the sanding block. They want to know about what grit it was. They missed that part. It's a I, medium coarse. Yeah, so it's probably like medium um, to coarse grit. Yeah, maybe like 180. It's, it's, it's not as fine as 220. But you could use heavy. It, it all depends on, I mean, how distressed you want. If you want it super, super, you don't want to use a coarse, like a 60 or 80 grit. Which is normally my standing walking choice. Uh, Tara wants to know what you're going to do with it. Are you going to write on it with chalk? Yes. Yes. I'm going to show you a trick after, um, it's, I guess, um, from what I understand, they call it seasoning your chalkboard with chalk so that it writes and cleans better. Sometimes you'll go to write on them and it kind of like is, um, I don't even know the right word. It doesn't want to go on nice and smooth. But yeah, we're, um, we're, we'll have two of these and yeah, definitely. Like I said, you can hang this in your kitchen for, as a reminder. Tony said it'd be a nice menu board. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, um, a coffee shop we go to uses a chalkboard hanging outside their drive through and they write every day their specials and... We'll be hitting that place up yeah. here shortly. Jackson yeah. wants to know what you're going to do with it. Are you going to hang it in your shop or keep it in your house? We, um, probably will end up selling these in our shop. Debbie says if you don't season it, it might stain. Yeah, um, we just, I, like I said, that's a trick that, that I saw and we've done it. And um, I don't really know if that's something that you have to do with them, but it can't hurt. So even like this, just distressed, it looks, the color and everything great. You can see the different color wood from the frame coming through. We'll wax it. You want to seal um, chalk paint anyway, um, either at least with a clear or and or a dark wax. But we really like the color um, with the dark wax over it. You want to make sure you get all the dust and everything off as much as possible before you wax so it doesn't get in there. But you can see it's really starting to look uh, different from just that old dusty frame that we had. Um, a couple of people are asking if you know the process to season it or if it's just something you thought of doing. Um, it's just something I saw and really all it is is taking a piece of chalk. I'm not going to do it until we're done and we're ready to wax, but taking a piece of chalk and just going over the whole chalkboard and then wiping it off. And it'll kind of give it that look like in a classroom, how it's got that hazy chalky look over it. And I guess that um, putting that first layer over the whole thing and then wiping it off, I guess fills in um, all the little crevices and stuff so your chalk will just write better. I don't think it's something you have to do at all, but it's just, just helpful, I guess. Jacqueline wants to know if you will varnish the frame or not, or if you'll leave it kind of like how it is now. I'm actually about to start dark, start dark waxing it, um, and we're using the Step Three in the Valspar, Valspar Chalky Finish Line. This is the antiquing wax. Um, it's their dark wax. It is like a dark um, brown color. This is a really great wax, um, and we're going for a really, really um, dark finish. So we're not going to use a clear wax with it, but there is a clear wax in this line also. 
that um, is awesome if you want to just, you know, have leave it the way it is. Or if you don't want this to be as dark, you would want to put clear wax down first. Um, but we're going for a pretty dark finish. So, And you want to work in small sections. You don't want to do the whole frame at once, cover it in the dark wax, because then it's going to be harder to work with. So I'm just going to do one side at a time. So this is the first side. Is it a problem if you get the... Uh wax that you're putting on now on the chalkboard paint? It isn't a problem. You'll just want to be sure you get it wiped off. And really, if we were doing this um, just for time reasons, we went ahead and did this, attached the chalkboard before um, we did this on Home Talk just for time so that you could, you know, we could go ahead and get it started tacked in so you could see that. So otherwise we probably would have done the, the frame all the way to the end before we did the chalkboard attached to it. So now I'm taking, this is actually like a surgical rag. Um, they're re they don't lose a lot of lint, so these are great. Another thing you can use is um, you know, a white rag. Some people like to use damp paper towels, um, but I'm using a surgical rag. And now I'm just gonna wipe off the extra wax and I'm gonna leave it heavily in the cracks and the crevices. Sabrina wants to know what kind of wax did you say? She missed it. This is the Chalky Finish Line Dark Antiquing Wax in the Valspar step line. Step three antiquing yep, wax. Yep, step three. So as you can see, this has made this side a totally different color and a totally different look. And that's what we're going for. See the two sides there. Yeah, that you can, it's a big difference. And if you wanted it to stay the bright teal color, you can just slap the clear wax on top of it instead. But I really, we really like the dark wax on top of the bright color, so. Monica it, says she loves it. Thank, thank you. you. And it looks really shiny right now, but after a few hours, that wax will really kind of soak in and it won't have that shine that it has right now. It'll, ha it'll be a totally matte finish. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a totally different look. Bless you. Bless. Thank you. Maybe this would be a good thing to write the countdown for Christmas since uh, it's November now, so everyone can think of uh, Christmas time. Margie wants to know where you got those rags at. <sighs> um, my... Um, my ex-husband is a linen guy, and he hooks us up with linens, so, with rags. A um, couple people tuning in late want to know if that is chalk paint underneath there. Yes. It is Valspar Chalky Finish Paint. And we use that for both the teal color and the black. Um, Jeanette wants to know how long do you leave the wax on before you wipe it off? Just, um, you just want to let it sit there for, I mean, you can wipe it off immediately. You don't want to let it sit on there for more than a few minutes because then it gets a lot harder to work with. Um, and then it, you're going to have a really dark, it'll stay dark like this the longer you leave it on. So I just let it, I wipe it on and then wipe off the extra. Lisa wants to know if the final finish is sticky or not. Nope, not at all. It's nice and smooth. It has more of a matte look to it. And it's easily uh, cleaned as well. Okay, that's it for waxing it. Super quick and easy. Just a helpful hint, if you were to paint this frame in black chalk paint, if you have any old black socks, that is a perfect thing to wax, uh, to use for your wax because you won't get any lint. Black is notorious for having, for having uh, lint when you are wiping it off. So now all I'm gonna do is take the chalk and just kind of go over the whole thing. Off. 
Sue wants to see the wax can again. This is the antiquing wax from Valspar. It's the step three that goes with the chalk paint that we chose. And it also comes in clear. And with, if you are doing something and you don't want a brown, like this is a brown tint, um, and you would want a black tint, you can actually take black latex based paint and mix it with the white, the clear wax and make a black wax too. Um, or any color you wanted. If you want like a red wax, you can do that. So, so again, um, I just keep wiping all this off and probably even dampen a paper towel after a little bit and get it off. But this will let it fill in all those spots up from that black paint so that when you go to really write on it with a chalkboard, it will um, write much clearer. Could you line the cans up? We got a couple people asking to see them all so they can screenshot them here. Sure. But this is it for the, the finished project. You see, you just kind of dampen it a little bit and start wiping it off, and it will give you much easier way to write on it. Can you hold it up? So will the chalkboard stay kind of wider like that, or like you said, you'll no, dampen a rag? No, we're going to get um, we're going to get a clean a rag and wet it just a little bit. And no, it will it'll go back to black. In fact, if we took a, a wet paper towel or a wet washcloth, it'll totally go back to black. This was just to get for chalkboard. If you get rub the chalk all the way over, it's just going to fill in all those little grooves that was naturally in the wood. Um, that would normally get, get missed. Sue wants to know where did you get the paint and wax? Did you get it at Lowe's? Yes. Lowe's. Shelly says it turned out awesome. Thank you. We love when you can take something that's normally just shoved in a corner and make it new and use it. We've been in the back of our shop for a couple of years, so it is time. Christy wants to know if you could use the same paint on a metal frame, if it would stick. Yes, they say that it will. I don't know that we've ever used um, used it on metal, but it, it will stick to anything. So that's the finished thing, and now you uh, can write anything. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, and don't forget to hit subscribe, and you can check us out at facebook.com slash 3crazycrows or our website, uh, 3crazycrows.com. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.